Four years ago today, Donald Trump tweeted, mail-in ballots substantially increases the risk of crime and voter fraud, which I know when you compare it to his usual unhinged, grammatically incorrect, lie-filled posts, it might seem pretty tame. But what he was doing there was setting up what would ultimately become the big lie. Around this time in 2020, Trump started to realize he might not win re-election due to how badly he bollocks to the COVID response leading states to start passing laws, letting people vote safely from home through the mail. So he began planting these seeds of mail-in election fraud in the minds of voters. And, well, we know the rest. Fast forward to today, and it looks like he's ready to once again sow doubt around the election, except this time with the help of some of his mega cronies. Tomorrow, Trump and House Speaker Mike Johnson, who was the leading peddler of the big light in the House, will deliver remarks at Mar-a-Lago on, quote, election integrity. On top of that, CNN is reporting that last week, the Republican National Committee sent out a scripted call to voters saying Democrats committed massive fraud in 2020, which is just the latest example of how, under its new leadership, the RNC has devolved into a complete and utter clown show. Just this week alone, you had RNC chair election denier Michael Watley lump in Ukraine with China and Iran when listing the United States' aggressive adversaries. While co-chair and Trump's daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, said this with a straight face. If you want to look at a family, and I'll say a man in Donald Trump, who has had nothing but misinformation and disinformation, as they like to say on the other side of the aisle, thrown at him every single day. I mean, there's never been anyone in history, I don't think, that has taken as much incoming as Donald Trump. John. Joining me now is the former chair of the RNC, Michael Steele, co-host of The Weekend here on MSNBC. I mean, McKinley, Kennedy, and Lincoln were assassinated, you know. Um... Right. There's that. <laughs> oh, geez. Look, you, you, your opening nailed the proposition. Um, this has always been, and, and I've been giving a lot of thought based on conversations I've had with people inside and outside of, of the party and MAGA. Um, there is a concerted effort uh, that you're starting to see that's setting up the narratives uh, for what is to come. This is not just about, you know, getting to Election Day and what they're going to roll out, whether it is, you know, threatening folks at ballot uh, locations or uh, gumming up the works by creating chaos and confusion um, in polling precincts uh, so that they can then justify having, you know, jack leg thugs show up um, in, you know, all outfitted in black and looking menacing to mm -hmm. scare off voters. It is also what comes afterwards, even with a Trump win. It is Project 2025. Yeah. It is the narrative around how the government is going to take shape under his leadership. Yeah. It is setting in motion all of the doubt and confusion now so that when he acts, everyone goes, oh, great, he's bringing calm and, and organization and structure. No, he ain't. Yeah. And, and I think that that's important for people to understand, Joy. Uh, Eric Trump says the, the only purpose at this point of the RNC, let's just play him. Here's Eric Trump. They have one objective, to get people out to the polls and right. to make sure that voter fraud does not happen in this country. And they will put every minute of every single day, they will use every single dime that they raise to make sure that Donald Trump is, is the next president of the United States and, and, and right. wins this upcoming election. Except that they're going to spend most of it on legal fees. But let me just give you a few data points for you to respond to. They're looking into the wind of Joe Biden now beating Trump in the majority of the national polls. They're looking at the Pew poll cratering all of this New York Times CNN nonsense about this sudden movement of young people and black people toward the Republican Party. Uh, when you go by age... Young people aged 18 to 29 and 30 to 49 are overwhelmingly leaning toward the Democrats. And that's whether you talk about men or women. There's no gender gap. And then it's split in 50 to 64. 65 plus, it's, mm -hmm. um, it's only, it's split among women and then only a big uh, thing for me, a big, uh, you know, Republican advantage among men. When you go by where Democrats have wide advantages, it's women with a college degree. It's urban voters, Hispanic voters, voters born in the 1990s, Asian voters and religiously unaffiliated and black voters. All of those are overwhelmingly advantages for Democrats. Republicans advantages are Mormons, 
white voters without a college degree, veterans, rural white men, and those born in the 1940s. The group, first group I showed you are the rising group population-wise. The second group are the declining group population-wise. They know they are at a disadvantage demographically, Republicans. Yeah. They have not changed that, and in fact, they've made it worse. I don't care what the 900-person polls say. These are the big polls, Pew. Yeah, yeah, and, and the thing to note about that Pew Research poll uh, is that that poll was taken before the collapse under Arizona, yes. before the elevation of IVF, mm -hmm. before a whole host of things that have subsequently occurred that have further, I think, impacted those numbers. Yes. At the end of the day, which is why you're starting to see this narrative emerge around, oh, the Democrats, you know, are, are you know, peddling in election uh, collusion and corruption and so forth. That's, you know, again, a, a lot of projection um, because we know where that collusion and corruption is going to be coming from. It's not the, it's not the Democrats, it's the Republicans. And, yeah. and all this, oh, the voter fraud from before, mm. well, this, this last election cycle, both 20 and 22, have the, been the most litigated and investigated for voter fraud of yes. any in our history. That's right. And yet, though, all those, the only thing, you know, only thing those Republicans produced, Joy, mm -hmm. were Republicans who were convicted of voter fraud. Correct. And, and voting <laughs> like nine times for Trump because they were so desperate because they know there are not enough votes for him. And this is why you have to understand why he did the violence. This is why he did January 6th. He knew he lost. He was embarrassed. He knew he was going to lose in advance. That's it. Michael Steele, That's thank it. you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.